The first thing I want to mention is that these are not the only questions we're going to be doing. This question does carry on. So there's 3.1 and 3.2. 3.2 then carries on over here. And then lastly, we also have a 3.3. So let's begin. We have a hot air balloon that is moving upwards at a constant unknown speed. Okay, so it's moving at a constant speed. So that means its acceleration is zero. That's for the hot air balloon. Then it says that is the hot air balloon in free fall? Choose from yes or no. Give a reason for the answer. An object is only under free fall if it is acting under the influence of gravity only. Now, if this hot air balloon was acting under the influence, if it was only being acted upon by gravity, then it would not remain at a constant speed. What would be happening is if it was going upwards, it would begin to slow down because of the gravity that is acting downwards. It would then reach a zero velocity and then it would begin to fall. That is what would happen if it was only gravity acting on that object. But they tell us that it's moving up at a constant speed. So these little, um, this fire over here that, 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 keeps the hot air balloon going, there's definitely some type of applied force over there. So is the object in, under free fall? No. And then we can say something like, gravity is not the only force acting on the hot air balloon. Gravity is not the only force acting on the hot air balloon. Okay, then, okay, so that's our first question. 3.1, done. The next one, when, it says that when the balloon is 200 meters above the ground, a small stone is dropped from the balloon. Okay, so we're gonna drop a little stone. Then it says another small stone, B, is going to be dropped, so dropped, okay, five seconds later from the balloon while the balloon is still moving upwards at, at a constant velocity. Stone A hits the ground at a speed of 62.68 meters per second. Calculate the speed of the hot air balloon. Okay, now we need to be careful. Whenever we normally see the word dropped, that normally means that the initial velocity is zero. But that is only true when we are on a type of question where we are, for example, at the top of a building. And if they tell you that something is dropped, when they're at the top of a building, then the initial velocity is zero. But when you are in a hot air balloon or at any one of these types of questions where you've got a pile of bricks on a crane or a motor going upwards or a hot air balloon going out upwards, I want you to please remember the following. The initial velocity of the object that is dropped Okay, so that could be a stone or a brick or a camera. You know, they always like to use that camera one. Um, or any type of object will always be the same as the velocity of the um, hot air balloon or sometimes it's a crane or anything like that. Okay, so what we can say is that the initial velocity of the object that is dropped will always be the same as the, as the velocity um, of the object that it is dropped from. So the velocity of, for example, the hot air balloon or the crane or anything like that. Okay, there's, there's, they like to ask this type of question and you need to remember that. Many people think, oh, but Kevin, if you drop that thing, won't the velocity be zero? It's not true, guys. What happens is that as soon as you drop that object, that object is actually gonna go up a little bit it's gonna slow down and then it's gonna start coming down. Yes, if you were in the hot air balloon, you wouldn't see that, but it's all relative. Okay, it's relative motion. So if you were standing somewhere over here on the ground and you watched the person dropping it, that person would maybe see the object going up a little bit. But if you are the person who's standing in the hot air balloon, you won't see that the object also goes up a little bit. Okay, but you must remember that it does. Okay, so when they ask us for the speed of the hot air balloon, 
what we can remember is that the velocity of the hot air balloon is the same as the initial velocity of the stone. Remember, because that's what was dropped. So we can use the stone now, and let's see what we have. We know the final velocity of the stone. We are trying to find its initial velocity, so that's what we're actually looking for. We know that the acceleration is 9.8, because that's what happens when an object is falling under free fall. Yo, but Kevin, we said it's not free fall. Guys, the hot air balloon is not under free fall, but the, the stone is under free fall. As soon as you drop that stone, the only forces acting on it would be gravity. And then we also know the displacement, which will just be 200. Some of you might say, yeah, but Kevin, it goes up and then it comes down. So isn't the distance a little bit more? Guys, this is not distance. This is displacement. So if you look at how far it falls from there to there, that's only going to be 200. Yes, it does go up a little bit, but then it also comes down. So that cancels out. Displacement is how far does it fall from the beginning to the end. In a, in a, and you must look at it in a straight line. Okay. And so we could possibly go and use, uh, but we don't have anything relating to time. So we could use this formula from our formula sheet because this is the only equation of motion that doesn't use time. And we need to choose a direction as positive. Um, it doesn't really matter, but I'll just choose downwards as positive. Okay, so the, the velocity when it hit the final velocity is 62,68 squared. The initial velocity, we have no idea, but it's squared plus two. Now gravity is, or acceleration is 9.8, and it is acting downwards, so we can say 9.8 is positive. And then the displacement. Sometimes the displacement is negative, so let's see. We're choosing downwards as positive, and let's see, the object starts over here, and it ends up over here, so it is ending up below the starting position, so that means, and we're choosing downwards as positive, so that means the displacement is a positive value. Because we're choosing downwards as positive, and the object is ending below the starting position, so that is a positive displacement. And so now we just need to go and calculate for initial velocity. So on the left-hand side here, after we square that, you're going to get 3928, don't round off, 0.7824, equals to the initial velocity squared, plus... 3920, take that over to the other side, and you end up with 8.7824. Then remember to square root, and so we should get 2.96 meters per second. And they just said speed, so you don't need to give a direction. Um, because speed is like a scalar, doesn't have direction. So that is the original velocity of the stone, but that also means it's the original velocity of the hot air balloon, because we said that the object that you drop and the object that you are dropping it from, like the crane or the hot air balloon, those two things have the same velocity at the beginning. Okay, so that answer is 2.96 meters per second. Okay, so we must just remember that for future questions, that that hot air balloon originally began moving at two point, well, that's, that's the velocity that the hot air balloon is moving at, and that's also the original velocity of the stone. Next question for three marks, how long does it take for the stone A to touch the ground or to strike the ground? So this one, we could probably just use this formula here. Yeah, you could use others. You could possibly also use this one, delta T. Yep, that would also work. Um, so I'm going to choose downwards as positive again for the stone. We know that the final velocity of the stone is 62.68. We know that its original velocity is the 2.96, what we said. Ah, but we've got to be careful. Minus 2.96. Why? Because we're choosing downwards as positive, but that stone originally went upwards for a small amount of time. Okay, the gravity will be positive 9.8 because we chose downwards as positive and gravity is downwards. And then the total time is actually what we're trying to calculate here. So I'm gonna take that 2.96 over to the other side. And so that's gonna give me 65.64. And then on the other side, I'm still gonna have, I'm still gonna have that. And then if we have to go work out the time, we should get 6.70, if we round off, 6.0, 6.70 seconds. 
Okay, so let's just remember we're moving on to the last part now. Oh no, we still have a few more questions actually. So we must remember that the original velocity of that stone was 2.96. We must remember that the total time to hit the ground, I don't know if we're gonna need this stuff, but let's just see, 6.70 seconds. Okay, so it says when the balloon, okay, we already saw that. Stone A strikes the ground, okay, so we did all of that. Then it says calculate, oh, they love to ask this kind of question. Calculate the distance between the hot air balloon and, oh yeah, there's also a stone B. Calc oh, this is cool. interesting. Calculate the distance between the hot air balloon and stone B at the instant when stone A strikes the ground. Okay, so this isn't too bad. What we must understand was that stone A went upwards and then it hit the ground in 6.7 seconds. Okay, so that's how long that took. What we must remember was that stone B was only dropped five seconds after stone A. So how long has stone B been in the ground in the air for? How long has B been in the air for? Well, we know that it was stone B was stone A was in the air for 6.7 seconds but stone B was thrown 5 seconds later so stone B has only been in the air for 1.70 seconds okay so that is how long stone B has been in the air for 1.7 seconds so what we can now do is we can try to work out how far would stone B have gotten downwards in 1.7 seconds. So let's quickly do that. So that's what we're gonna see. Um, so we can use this formula to see how far would stone B go downwards in 1.7 seconds. So let's choose downwards as positive again. So we're trying to see how far it went down. We know that stone B would also have an initial velocity of 2.96 because it's coming from the same hot air balloon. I've put it as a negative because it would originally go up, but we chose downwards as positive. We know that stone B will be in the air for 1.7 seconds. We know that gravity is 9.8, and we know that the time again is 1.7 seconds. And so if we go work out this, I'm not gonna round off because it's not my final answer, so I'm gonna say 9.129 meters. Now that's not the answer. That is how far B has gone down. But at the same time that B was going down, the hot air balloon was going up. But what's nice about the hot air balloon, we can use the same formula for the hot air balloon actually. Uh, let's keep downwards as positive. I know that you learners like to keep one direction as positive. Sometimes I choose both but then some people comment and they're like so I don't understand so let me keep it downwards as positive what we must remember is that the hot air balloon does not have an acceleration but Kevin this is vertical projectile motion yes but the hot air balloon is not in free fall remember that was the first question they asked us and this question was um, is the hot air balloon in free fall and it's not because it's moving at a constant speed okay um, so it doesn't have an acceleration. So we can just say that its, dis uh, its distance or displacement that it's gonna cover will be um, its an initial velocity, which is negative 2.96, because I chose upward, I mean downwards is positive, but the hot air balloon is going um, down. And the time is also 1.7. And if we had to work that out, we get five point or negative 5.032 meters, but because we chose downwards as positive, we can then say, therefore, the hot air balloon is 5.032 meters that it has gone up. Okay, so now um, the distance between the hot air balloon and B will simply be equal to um, the 9.129 meters plus the 5.032 because the, 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 the hot air balloon is going up and the stone went down. And so if we add that together, we should get 14.16 meters. And here's the last question for, um, for this whole question. So they want us to, on the same set of axes, draw a position time graph for both the hot air balloon and stone A. So, okay, so let's draw our y-axis, which is the position. 
So we can just say here position in meters. And this would be our time measured in seconds. And they said use the ground as the reference. Okay, so this is the ground. So where do we start? We start at 200 meters. Okay, let's do the hot air balloon first. The hot air balloon starts at 200 meters and it will just continue to move upwards like this um, at a constant rate, okay? It's not gonna be a curve that does something like that because that would mean that the hot air balloon is getting faster and faster and faster. So this will be the balloon. They've asked us to call that balloon. Now let's look at the what would happen to the stone. The stone would first go up a little bit Okay, so let's show that it goes up, but we can't let it go above this line because that means that the stone overtakes the hot air balloon. Imagine how weird that would look if the stone overtakes. So it doesn't overtake, so it li its line goes sort of there, and then it would turn, and then it would hit the ground like that. Okay, and um, so, it, so yeah, so it went up a little bit, and then it would hit the ground. Make sure that these two time intervals are in line with each other, so that would be at 6.7 seconds. And that's all that you can really draw. We must label this graph as A. And so that's it for that question.